It's the second week of June, which means the Supreme Court is expected to make some major decisions as early as this Thursday. At this point, there are usually about four to six cases that are still up in the air. But this year, there are more than a dozen that have not yet been decided. And that includes several of the biggest cases this term, some of which pose the greatest challenges to our democracy since it was established nearly 250 years ago. CBS News legal contributor Jessica Levinson joins us now to break down what we consider to be three of the most important cases to look for this term. She's also a professor at Loyola Law School in Los Angeles. Jessica, here we go. This is the Supreme Court speed round. Let's start with Donald Trump's claim that as president, he is immune from prosecution. What constitutional principle um, underpins this claim of immunity? What's at tension uh, here in that case? Well, what we're looking to is old precedent that says, you know what, there is something different about the president. The president under the Constitution has to take care to faithfully execute the laws. And we understand that in order to allow him to do so, we need to basically put a little bit of a bubble around him for certain situations. So we have precedent that says you can't sue the, the president for official acts with respect to civil suits. But we don't have anything that says what you can do to a president or former president when it comes to criminal prosecutions for official acts. And so that's the case the court is deciding. I know this is a lightning round, so I'll just say quickly, I think look for a middle ground. Look for the court to say some version of there is some immunity from criminal prosecution for official acts, but it's not complete. And here's how we make the determination. And then just to follow up on this, Jessica, because there's actually a live case, of course, going on with respect to this, that still hangs in the balance as well, right? What the ruling from the court on this question that the justices may decide needs some addressing, they also have to decide what happens with that on those ongoing cases. Well, that's exactly right. And specifically, I think the D.C. election interference case is where we see the most impact. Also, potentially the Georgia election interference case as well. But you're absolutely right that there are two cases pending against the former president, and they could either be completely wiped out with respect to official acts, although I don't think that will happen, or they could go forward in full. And I don't think that will happen either. One other thing to mention is there's another case pending before the Supreme Court, the Fisher case, that addresses the obstruction statute that Trump is charged under in that D.C. election interference case. He's actually charged under two statutes. One of them is the obstruction statute, and the, the court is also going to talk about the scope of that particular statute. So there's two reasons that that D.C. election interference case has essentially been put on pause. Now we'll go on to the challenge uh, for the Food and Drug Administration's regulations on the abortion pill, Mifepristone. Effect effectively, this is a case about access to that pill, but that's not exactly what's being debated in the specific case, right? That's right. It has everything and nothing to do with abortion. And this case is really about, number one, who can sue to say that the FDA went beyond its authority in 2016 and 2021, when it made it easier to obtain and access mifepristone. And so that first question is, can it be doctors who say that they might at some point have to treat somebody who has a rare side effect to mifepristone? Is it nonprofit organizations who are saying, well, we're having to divert resources in order to challenge what the FDA is doing? So the big question, and I think frankly, where this case begins and ends is on this question of who has standing to challenge what the FDA did. Mm. Now, if you get past that, if you move beyond standing, then it becomes a question of not do you like mifepristone, but were the FDA's decisions arbitrary and capricious when, again, it made it easier to get mifepristone, for instance, by a telehealth appointment as opposed to having to go in person. Now to uh, the Texas and Florida. Well, there, the case is related to social media that the court has to deal with, which is about really who can regulate that, that social media. Um, what, what should we look for there? What's the tension in, in those cases? The tension is state law and the First Amendment. The tension is Texas and Florida trying to say to social media companies, 
here's how you moderate your content. And those social media companies saying, and here's my first amendment right to say, no government, you don't get to tell me who I kick off and when I kick them off and if I kick them off. Finally, Jessica, this is not the Supreme Court, but I got to ask you about Hunter Biden's conviction in Delaware. He's been found guilty on all three charges. Um, the attorneys for the president's son say they are going to appeal. Are there grounds for appeal uh, on this case or are there just sort of general grounds that that all, one always appeals in a case? So, John, this might actually be the Supreme Court. I think potentially the best argument they have on appeal is that the particular laws that he was charged under, and specifically the gun possession law, that that's actually unconstitutional under the Second Amendment because of a 2022 decision that the Supreme Court made in a case called Bruin, where it made it much more difficult for states and the federal government to impose gun control restrictions. We know that he's very likely going to make this argument because he already made it unsuccessfully in the trial court. One thing to watch, the Fifth Circuit it. In looking at that Supreme Court decision, that 2022 decision, the Fifth Circuit said, we don't think that federal law can apply to people who used to use marijuana. Now, Hunter Biden didn't used to use marijuana, but look for them to rely on that case in their appeal.